Red Bull is a very innovative and disruptive company in many ways, and there are a lot, a lot of interesting things that businesses can learn from it. In this video, we'll uncover all the secrets and point out precisely in which areas Red Bull innovated compared to other beverage brands such as Coca-Cola. So, let's go! Before we get into the details of Red Bull amazing business strategies, we need to understand the context first. The company itself was founded in Austria in 1984, but the original drink dates back to 1976. It was invented in Thailand by Chileo Uwitia and called Creating Dank, which basically translates to Red Bull. Chaleo had prior pharmaceutical experience, and so the uniqueness of that drink was that in addition to caffeine, it also incorporated taurine, a chemical that helps reduce muscle damage and fatigue. Some studies even suggest that it improves athletic performance. And in case you've heard the conspiracy theory, no, it's not bull semen. Although that would have been epic. Anyway, it was a very local drink in Thailand, but in 1982, Austrian entrepreneur Dietrich Mateschitz discovered it while on a business trip there. He was jet-lagged and tired, but found that the drink helped him get a boost of energy for the rest of the day. He was so impressed that he proposed to Chaleo to partner and bring it worldwide. So they created the company in Austria and invested $500,000 each because all outside investors declined. They didn't believe in the potential of the idea. And it took them three years to adjust the drink to better fit the European market and set up the business. And finally, Red Bull Beverage was launched in 1987. Today, Red Bull sells about 10 billion cans per year for a revenue of around $7 billion. However, for those who don't drink it or haven't even tried it, Red Bull is mostly known as a sponsor of various sports, especially the extreme ones. We see their logos on football and Formula One teams, parachutes, wingsuits, snowboards, mountain bikes in space, and whatnot. It seems that they are literally everywhere when it comes to extreme athletic stuff. So how did it come to be and how does it all make sense? That's where business model innovation comes in. First of all, Red Bull created a completely new market of energy drinks. Creating a new market from scratch is probably the most complicated and risky business strategy, as explained in my bestseller business model innovation course, for which you can find the link in the description. What makes it a new market is the fact that people don't just drink Red Bull like any other beverage for its taste, which by most standards is not very appealing, but they mostly drink it to get a boost of energy in certain circumstances. By the way, let me know in the comments if you drink Red Bull or if you even ever tried Red Bulls and what you think about it. So in order to create this market, they had to reach those places where such boosts were needed. For example, students who party. They want to stay up late, show their best dance moves, so naturally if a drink can help them with that, they'll buy it. That's also when mixes with alcohol such as vodka Red Bull became insanely popular. Same for the athletes, they need a lot of energy, so Red Bull started to sponsor more and more events, distribute drinks for free and generally be present, like with the famous Red Bull Mini Cooper. But back to that later. In addition to students and athletes, this market also included people with demanding professions who work late. Therefore, the value proposition of the product itself became increase, focus and energy and epitomized in the company's slogan, Red Bull gives you wings. <laughs> but growing a completely new beverage brand in a market dominated by giants like Coca-Cola was extremely tough and showing up during student parties and sport events wasn't enough as a marketing strategy to popularize it. That's when Red Bull decided to double down and get into extreme and unique sports so that the brand itself is always associated with outstanding and audacious achievements. And probably that's how you view it, right? I don't know, let's find out. Tell me what you think about Red Bull in the comments, I'm curious. So this was an innovation in the customer relationships area. Instead of doing traditional advertising on TV, billboards and basically places saturated by traditional brands, Red Bull decided to focus on that specific type of high-level athletic sponsorship. 
so much so that it became their main activity. They don't even produce their own drinks. They outsource it to the company Rauch Fruchtschaft. They pay 9 cents for a can and sell it to wholesalers for $1.87, therefore the margin being 20 times the cost. So Red Bull's main activity is indeed marketing, which is also a different approach compared to most beverage companies. It can even be argued that Red Bull is now also a media and event company. If we only look at their social media channels, they have 10 million subscribers on YouTube, 15 million on Instagram and 6 million on TikTok. They own all the rights to their content and also have other media properties such as Red Bull TV, Red Bulletin, Bulletin and the company Red Bull Media House. Uh, they produce so much cool content that it is now part of their value proposition as well. In terms of sports, in addition to sponsorships, they also outright own two Formula One teams and several football clubs, including Leipzig. Such investments are also sound businesses of their own. For example, they paid $25 million for the New York Red Bulls team and now it's valued at $290 million. Therefore, team management is now also part of their key activities. But regardless of all of this, uh, most of their revenue still comes from beverage sales. Yep, the drink accounts for 97% of it. But if you think that this sponsorship strategy is overblown, that's wrong. For example, when Felix Baumgartner jumped from like outer space, that feat cost Red Bull about $50 million. But it is estimated that global media coverage of this event was worth $6 billion. This is how much it would have cost if it was a regular media campaign. So a pretty good return on investment, to say the least. Also, it immediately led to more than $500 million in sales. Because of all this, Red Bull also created a network of all the people interested in extreme sports. Whenever anyone wants to do something crazy, they can look to Red Bull for financing. So, Red Bull main goal is to be associated with energy, audacity and achievement. Since their drink is specifically designed to provoke an energy boost, they found a natural fit with sponsorship of traditional and extreme sports. You drink Red Bull and your brain associates it with performance. It is definitely all about the brand because other energy drinks include the exact same ingredients in addition to their own and yet Red Bull retains a 43% market share of global energy drinks, the second one being Monster with 39% and it's close of course but Red Bull was the one that created the market in the first place and stayed the leader for all this time. It also remained a private company while Monster is public and it is American. Red Bull was growing in Europe and only entered the US market in 1997. Monster Energy was launched five years later in 2002 by an existing American beverage company which gave it an advantage in its local market. And today the biggest problem for Red Bull is that the whole company still depends on only one drink with quite a specific taste even if it comes with a few variations. Also, the brand has some trouble balancing its athletic image with the unhealthy perception most people have of energy drinks in general, whether it is justified or not. I don't know, this is a different debate. If you like this analysis, it's just a very small glimpse of what you could learn in my bestseller business model innovation course. Just take a look, the link is in the description, it's very affordable and it has tons of business strategy examples to learn from. And of course, destroy the like button and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. See you soon!